Okay, time for another Unity tutorial. Um, this time I'm going to show you how to make objects in Unity, custom objects that you can reuse no matter how complex they are. Uh, they're called prefabs and you can see here in your project window that there should already be a folder called prefabs uh, for you. Now let me show you what a prefab is. For example, here's one of my hero characters and uh, let me zoom in on him. And um, he is a prefab, he's already been created and as you can see here in the inspector window, it's got a, a name, it's got a tag, it's got a bunch of animations, a bunch of scripts, uh, controller, it's got an audio component, uh, it's got a bunch of uh, a script with a bunch of variables already set for it. So, you know, we don't want to have to, you know, recreate this very complex character all over and over. But if we did want to have, you know, several of these in a scene, um, we can just drag them in here from the prefabs uh, folder. It doesn't matter how many of them we drag in there. We, we've got them all right there. Okay, so let's see how to create our own prefab object. Also, you can create them from inside of scripts, but I'll get to that in a second. Okay, so let's, um, you see here under my prefabs folder, I have a, a folder I created myself called effects. Now let's create a new effect, okay? Let's create an effect that's sort of like um, something that would happen you know, uh, when you got damaged, you know, some sort of like like blood hit or spray or something like that, kind of damage effect. So let's create a particle system. Uh, game object, create other particle. Oh, I'm sorry, create a camera by mistake. Create other particle system. Okay, hit F to move in on that. Okay, the the default size is maybe a bit too small, so I'll say minimum size one, maximum size three. Okay, you can see it's starting to change. Uh, minimum energy and maximum, I'll give it maybe six or, or seven for that. Uh, this is going to be a one-time kind of small thing, so let's only make it be like minimum number of particles, 20, maximum number of 35, let's say. All right, and let's give it a little bit of, um, it's going to kind of shoot up in the air, so we'll say Y direction of two. Okay, and then we'll give it a little bit of randomness, one on each uh Thing there okay there we go so we got some sort of like cone of, of particles coming up and then we only want to play the particles one time uh, so we'll click on one shot all right and you'll see it'll play it over and over again all right so that's gonna be like a, a damage hit um, it doesn't look that good so um, the color should be a, a bit more like a red so let's go ahead and you can see you have five different colors here let's go ahead and change these so that as the particles age, they change color. All right. Okay. Maybe this one should be a bit more burnt orange. Okay, and um, I'll just give it a little bit more randomness. All right. Okay, so now we have a nice little particle system here. And um, we're going to want to refer to this by a name, so I'm going to give it a name here. I'm going to call it um, Damage Hit, okay? And um, you can see here the name is, is purely for your own purposes. It, it doesn't mean anything to Unity at all. Uh, if you want to refer to this object later on in a script, for example, if you wanted to create this specifically, um, you'd have to tag it. So as you can see here, if you click on Tag, it says right now Untagged. So I have many different tags down here, and let's go ahead and give it a new tag. Actually, I already created a, a tag called damage hit. If I wanted to add a new tag, I would just say add new tag. I could go down here and name it. All right, uh, I've already got my tag, so let's give it the tag damage hit. Okay, now let's create a prefab object out of this. Um, back to my uh, prefabs folder here, effects subfolder, right click, create prefab. Okay, and you can see the new prefab is, has got a little white box next to it. So I'll click on it, and um, I will call this prefab damage hit. Could call it anything. I'm going to call it that so it's easy for me to understand. And then from my uh, hierarchy window right here, I'm just going to drag it and drop it onto the prefab, the empty prefab. And as you can see, it becomes blue, the little box there, and that means that the prefab has been uh, populated. And so now whenever we want one of these, we can just drag it in here, or we can refer to it from a script, for example. Let's say we want to modify this. Um, if we modify this, for example, let's say we give it different colors. Okay. 
Okay. Now, whenever we bring these prefabs in, you'll see that every prefab has been updated. We don't have to update them all ourselves. Okay. Um, so the other way you can uh, you can also uh, edit your prefabs from right in here, um, right in inside of the hierarchy window. Let's let's add a uh, a new component. Let's let's add something like a, let's add a script to it because right now the um, prefab. This object plays the particles one time, but then the object itself stays there. So let's say you have thousands of these for some reason. Um, I would imagine that that would get kind of memory intensive. So let's put a script in here that is going to destroy this object after a few seconds. So I've got I've already created a script in my effects folder here called Damage Hit Script. So if we look at this, it has a um, when you create a new script, you get this built-in function called update, which is called every frame the game plays. And inside of update, it just says destroy game object comma three, which means in three seconds, destroy this game object. Okay, so that's what we want to do. We want this game object to uh, self-destruct after a certain amount of time. So I'll just drag this onto the uh, instance that's in the game scene right now and watch what happens. Okay, this warning comes up, says that you're losing the prefab. So if you change a component of an object, um, you're gonna it's going to become its own unique object object at that point. It still has the same tag, so you can refer to it in a script, but it's not going to be affected. When you affect the prefab, if you change the colors, for example, then this this instance here will, will no longer be affected by that. It's its own unique thing. So I'm going to say continue. I don't want to lose the work I already got. And um, let's go ahead and let, you know, let me prove to you that um, it's not being affected here. So let's go to my effects if I can find it, damage hit, and let's change the colors here. Okay, so as you can see, it's not being the colors of this this uh, instance here are not being changed by what's here done in the editor. Okay, uh, let's say that the change that I made here um, I want to be applied to all the prefabs. Uh, because a lot, oftentimes you're going to want to edit stuff inside of your scene here so you can see what, what's happening in real time. So it's easy enough to do. Just go ahead and just take your edited object from your hierarchy and just drag it and drop it onto the prefab. And now you can see that the prefab has been updated. So all the other objects uh, associated with the prefab will have the same update. So again, from the editor here, I'm going to change the colors back a little bit. So there we go. Okay. And um, if we, for example, let's say we add something to a component inside of the project, uh, uh, you know, our prefab uh, folder here, let's add an audio component called an audio uh, source so that we can have this thing, uh, for example, play a sound effect. Okay. You'll see that that audio source component has been added here. We didn't get the message because we're doing it inside of our, our project. So there's a difference between what happens in the hierarchy window or the scene and what happens here in the project folder. Any of the edits you make in the project folder are automatically added to the prefab. Any edits of components made here in your actual game scene, you'll get that message that you're going to lose the prefab. And then if you want to keep those updates for all your different prefabs, again, you just drag them and drop it onto the existing one. Okay, so I hope that helps out. Oops.